Okay, so this is your operating system. This is Command CNC. And there's a lot of features that have been simplified in the past over different operating systems we've used on the Star Lab. We have a much simpler layout, um, a much faster torch eye control. Gosh, it's it's got to be one of the best ones out there. Um, so now we're gonna we're gonna bring in a file and let's take a look at it. So we're gonna hit open up here. Go to our desktop where we saved it. Let's bring it in. Okay, so we got a measurement here of where it's at. When you open this program, you're gonna see the e-stop active and, and that we have to press that to get any motion. See we got some motion now, tables moving. If this screen doesn't come up and it gives you an error, either the control is not turned on fully, your or your cable going to the control is in the wrong spot, which gosh hopefully it isn't. That can cause some some problems. Or um, it's broken. So this should come up. This is your 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 guarantee that you are connecting to the controller and PC is happy. <clears throat> now we have some various buttons here. Um, we have some run options here. We've got some 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 positional options here, and we have some jog options if we wanted to jog in very accurate um, motions. We could do that. Um, and we have over here our torch eye control display and, and uh, things that are going to happen with the torch over here. Down here our feed rate override. If you if you drop this below 100 and, and all things are equal, your torch is going to dive in the material. I mean that's how that's lined to torch eye control. If you go too high, you just won't cut through material. So feed rate override pretty much is going to stay at 100% all the time. Max velocity, let's keep that up too. Our jog speed, we can change that. If we bring it to 100% and we press our jog button, that table is going to move very fast. If we leave it at 20%, it's going to go 20% of jog speed until we hold our shift button down on our keyboard. Then it's going to it's going to default to 100% until we release our shift button. Let's clear up that screen. Um, so that's the explanation for those items down there, and just this jog type here. Let's talk about um, zeroing X and Y. We zero X and Y. It zeroes to our grid position of how we imported this part into sheet cam where we want our X and Y zero. When we use the home function in X, it auto squares the gantry. This is a priceless option. Auto squaring the gantry gives you round holes and good geometry. If you have a machine that does not have an auto square feature, it's either going to bend components or put unneeded wear in components, slamming into a stop trying to square it up. Auto square uses a set of switches, one on each axial motor that run as a pair down the gantry. And that auto square um, using the home X will um, um, give you a, a very, very, very long life with this machine. So over here we have our disable hold and disable torch and velocity anti-dive. If we wanted to dry run this part and we just wanted the torch to touch off and dance around, I mean, we could take a tape measure and measure this out where our zero is, where our torch position is and say in the positive in, in one axis we're 10.05 inches, positive in the other we're almost 11 inches, we've got enough material, we're good to go, we can run it. But if we wanted it to dance around, we'd turn these two off, turn torch eye control off, and run the part. And it would it would move around the part without turning the torch ever on. And um, so we we could do it that way. Um, now let's talk about some of these other features down here. Um, real quickly on this velocity anti dive, I always leave it checked. There's no reason not to not to check it. We hit our diagnostics tab and we can see where our switch is. If we have a switch um, that's sitting on its position, home position, we will see it here. The messages. This is where we're going to find our potential um, error messages if we have an error message. It'll be listed here as you follow the cursor down here. It'll also be listed in this corner. What are our most common error messages we're, we're going to run into? Limits. 
limit. So we have a limit in the z-axis and this will um, keep you from over traveling your z-axis and putting unwanted wear and damage on the coupling on the motor coupling. Um, the other one we might see is probe um, trip during during touch-off sequence and that means we had a bunch of water splash up and it trip, tripped the probe. We can always come back from that and how we would come back from that is click any piece of geometry you know um, let's pick a smaller piece of geometry like maybe something in here we go up to the last M5 highlight that hit run from line we'll actually go over and run the line run the machine from there okay let's not do that okay so when we open you see all this code we got some buttons we got some features um, we know what messages do see I stopped it it moved finished without making contact so I stopped that THC settings let's talk about something that's really important DTHC settings velocity anti-dive make sure this is checked what is anti-dive anti-dive says when the feed of cut reaches 85 percent stop moving the z-axis there's so many machines out there that don't have anti-dive we are living in a modern age anti-dive is one of those features that causes your torch not to collide with the plate when it's taking a corner or going around a radius it doesn't drop down and, and, and hit your workpiece it's a very important feature it should be on every machine it's still not on every machine there's a lot of machines that don't have this this velocity anti-dive here is a complex uh, anti-dive that works extremely well at high speeds the whole system uses a very high speed torch height control we need to have make sure our, our systems isolated our grounds are in for this stuff to work right so um, that's one feature we definitely want to make sure um, is checked and then we have a YouTube video of a 20 minute cut and it uses um, velocity anti-dive 14 gauge couple hundred inches a minute and it's beautiful part 20 minutes straight cutting um, and that is with anti-dive very important part of the equation so these are reference materials here for you to look at different preset bolts and and these DTHC settings once you start messing with these you're probably going to want to call in and, and get a factory reset um, the reason why they're all at zero is we're in simula simulation mode we do not have a, a torch eye control hub and in and uh, torch eye control hooked up right now otherwise these would be tweaked um, so let's look at our live view here as we move our torch around you can see the, the little crosshair move over our, our part the machine is moving right now the 6x12 behind us moving so we can clean that up so it's following it in real time and you'll see these things change color as you cut them that'll give you an indication of, of what you've cut we can go over here to this part we can re-zero you know it comes here in this plane in our X plane Y there it is in the Y plane and we can use our mouse scroll button to scroll in and when we open our code we get all this code do we need to know this code no not really but we do want to know if we want to start back from some certain point you know that we know um, where the actual M5 is at that point so let's say we go to touch off and our torch we we misinterpret our x0 or y0 or cut and our, our sheet isn't long enough or big enough plate and we come down and we're going into the past the material because there's no material there and we're headed into the waterbed <laughs> so this this little tab here has a little um item called touch off limit and what this limit does is it stops travel it looks for um material and here we have it set to 0.95 so it'll look for material um, 0.95 of an inch past where you started your z0 so if that's the case all star lab machines have a z limit switch so if you over travel um, in z negative it will hit that limit switch and if it does it'll put the machine in in e-stop and to get over this um, when you've hit that limit you click on this manual tab here you click this override limits button and you can press your e-stop button and and then you can you can use your controller or your keyboard page up to come out out of that uh, uh, position and that will 
trip the switch, uh, release the switch rather. And uh, that that is that touch off feed rate, um, or, or I'm sorry, that touch off limit is really a safety feature, so you don't over travel into the waterbed. And although we have a magnetic breakaway, you don't want to activate it if you can help it. We have also a touch off feed rate with the Omic system. Anything over 26 inches a minute will put too much down pressure on your material. Um, when we're routing, we want to make sure we check the skip touch offs button here for routing. We're going to be Z zeroing our routing tool right on top of the material. And there will be a, a, an interface that will be on your desktop slightly different than this. It, it'll be simplified. It won't have this this uh, torch light control um, system here. So that's basically um, you know the the command CNC in a nutshell. We can go to MDI here too. We can we can type in some code. We could do like G zero X three point Y six point. Once you hit enter, the machine will move. Well, I screwed up. I had too many. Too many numbers in here. There we go. So it moves. Too many. I had a space in there and some dots. So we can do a, a manual data input as well. But for our normal operation, we'll be using the auto screen in the live view. And that will be um, what we'll use for cutting our material. That's pretty much it. Now uh, let's talk about. Um, besides the interface, when we go to run this part, let's say we hit run. Let's, once we hit run, they'll set up the conditions for torch light control. Now, since we're in simulation mode, we don't have torch light control hooked up to this. These preset volts will will um, be much higher than that. We see right here in the code, preset volts set to 137. So once we hit run, the cursor will drop down and we'll see this turn to 137. Once we hit resume, they'll actually start the cut and we'll start cutting. And we'll see this the, the volts at torch here and our preset here. 